Hi all, welcome back to my channel. This is Mod to Saint Como, and this is a mod thing. I wanted to talk about the economics of being a YouTube fragrance influencer or YouTube fragrance reviewer or YouTube fragrance content creators. Those are all the terms they might refer to people that you see uh, talking about free fragrances, reviewing fragrances, talking about their opinion about what their experience have been with fragrances and things like that. <laughs> While they're doing it, is there some economics behind <laughs> just coming and talking about fragrances as opposed to something else. <laughs> so I'm going to speak in terms of observation, not so much I have examined any formal data from YouTube, which I actually would love to have. <laughs> I need to find out if such data is publicly available, but I believe that the case of fragrance reviewer is an interesting economic case in terms of understanding the economics of decision making <laughs> to be a content creator and I think fragrance is, is one of those examples of, of content creation that might help us think about the interesting aspect of the economics behind that. The first question then we have to ask is, when we think about economics, is it a business decision? In a way, although some people might enter fragrance review just as a pastime or as something to do because they see other people doing it or because they have a lot of fragrances and they love to talk about fragrances and they just decide to talk about it but you're going to find yourself very quickly realizing that it is an economic decision because there are resources that goes into reviewing products. And to the extent that there are costs and resources associated with reviewing products, what are the costs and that, what are the revenue that comes out of it? So this is why this is a ultimately economic decision. So there is a lot that could be said about it, but I'm just trying to give you a little bit of a super crush course on my observation on the economics of it. First of all, when you think about any business decision, we want to think about the entry cost. Is, that a, is there a low cost of entry to it or a high cost of entry? And if there is a high cost of entry, you have to have the resources to come up with that initial money to go into that investment, into that business decision. And you have to think about the appeal of your product. You have to think about the appeal of your product. Just talking then about the appeal and the demand for the products. It turns out there is a big demand for fragrance reviews. And you can tell that by the number of entries. Like all the time there are new reviewers that's coming. And now you have thousands of people who talk about fragrances on YouTube. There is a lot to be said about it because this is an industry that put out easily a thousand fragrances every year. So there is a whole big huge market for that product itself. So if you're a fragrance reviewer and there's a thousand products a year, 
to be talked about potentially you can think about you would never run out of ideas in terms of if you get into just talking about fragrances in terms of entry cost it becomes cheap in terms of idea because ideas is a very expensive commodity it's very hard to come up with original ideas so if there were a product that didn't exist or like few people know about it then it's harder to talk about but we think this is a product that's widespread use that's so much of it in the market we don't have to run off ideas when you're content creator the main challenge at supplying that content is coming up with ideas it doesn't take a lot of imagination to come up with the idea which is your main the main cost of your commodity it doesn't cost you a lot to come up with that idea if you're a fragrance reviewer because there's so many fragrances out there another concept of the easy of entry for fragrance reviewer is the attractiveness of the product now fragrance is a luxury product and if we look at the type of products that are very popular on YouTube reviewing luxury product is one of them uh, in addition to motivation because everyone have issues have problems they like to hear advice but the second aspect of it really is product review because before all YouTube is an advertisement company it probably really began with just talking about product that's the focus right and now that the market the advertising market has realized that people believe the regular folks that are experiencing products perhaps more convincingly than just a beautiful commercial they love to look at the commercial but if an influencer that they whose personality they like talk about the product it's like something people just believe in and I can tell you people are telling me oh my god I bought this because of you <laughs> I didn't even really intend to influence people I really was just like talking about my opinion but I realized whenever you put yourself out there and you are a personality that people love you influencing them <laughs> so that's something to be taken seriously obviously there is this attractiveness then in luxury product because it's creating a dream it's creating a dream it's a little bit like motivation you're helping people feel better where well, you're helping people have a fantasy an affordable fantasy because if you think about for example a valentino fragrance that's about maybe 60 dollars versus a valentino dress that's like five thousand someone can be part of this luxury fantasy by feeling like the fragrance they use make them feel rich make them feel elegant make them feel this so this is why seriously videos like how to smell rich the 10 fragrance that are so attractive to men these people never get tired of them <laughs> okay it's like a self therapy somehow for people to think just like an easy reach like it becomes almost a little bit of an addictive drug to just believe that in that fantasy that those top 10 fragrances that change all the time or like the sexiest are going to be panty droppers <laughs> in case I hear that expression in fragrances for men <laughs> so you get the gist it is an attractive product and there is an easiness of entry because there is a lot of product to be talked about you're not going to run out of ideas and there is a little bit of an ease of entry because it's relatively a cheap luxury product than other luxury designer goods so for example i can buy a lot of fragrance for one thousand dollars and talk about it but if I'm you know but if I'm talking about a Gucci or a Chanel dress or purse it's a lot more expensive 
so you would find that any person who doesn't have a lot of a lot of resources it's easy for them to start talking about luxury and help people create this dream at a relatively low cost for them so the more luxury stuff you would find perhaps it's people who are super rich people who are models who are being given those luxury products who are already modeling them who probably are reviewing super rich expensive shoes purses and dresses although you can find people really forcing themselves into doing that and going into debt and so forth but going into debt is never a problem by the way so this is the second step you get the G so far entry easy entry attractive products that's giving a fantasy and a dream the cost relatively lower relative to other luxurious good. And now, how do people afford that? Is this then a viable long-term proposition? It really depends on potentially how hard you work, how effective you are able at or having luck that people really love your personality, how funny you are, how interesting people find you, how much people are willing to listen to you because the competitiveness is so huge that probably if you are extremely attractive, you are extremely well-spoken, it's going to probably be easier for you to sell that luxury product. You know fragrances so this is why you might actually find some of the more beautiful people <laughs> like jeremy fragrances like has two million subscribers most people would say oh he's a handsome dude and he has this thing of doing those seed ups or whatever with just one hand <laughs> like very athletic and so forth right so obviously attractiveness potentially could and personality worship is going to play a role in the attractiveness and if you look at some of the top people first of all they've been in the business for longer so there is also the first mover advantage okay when it wasn't so crowded and people had the great personality they were able to become very popular and we need to also understand the more popular you are youtube being an advertisement company the more the algorithm is also favoring you so like in any products that you're selling on the market if technology if there is some form of technological shock if technology technology can help you go very far versus someone who's not using that technology or that technology is not working to their advantage so it turns out if you're a first mover advantage or you're very attractive and people are really looking into your product uh, worshiping you as a personality in addition to the product the algorithm which is the money <laughs> machine needs you to have more and more views and you're going to make more and more money so ultimately YouTube is a very big business things like if you make I would have to look at the numbers okay I did some research in terms of how much money you can make you making money from all form of sources you making money from commercials you making money from sponsorship you making money from views and just views alone when I look at the statistic just to give you an idea of those statistics you can potentially make 30 million dollars I mean dollars on YouTube if you have some 100 million views <laughs> we're talking about serious impact on a product by just being one person that's influencing people to just watch you 
and then the algorithm is helping you on top of it the more you're doing that the more the algorithm is helping you so this is why if you go to perfume channel even if you're not a subscriber all you see is those same guys that the algorithm keeps throwing at you you know the big guys and you don't see any of the small guys okay so there's like some top 270 youtubers that went uh, perfume reviewer that range from jeremy being two million the highest to like hundreds of thousands of subscribers just the top 200 or so and then everyone else is like a big old gap <laughs> between hundreds of thousand and just a few thousand 10 12 thousand okay and of course hundreds and and so forth so you just make maybe three cents per view on YouTube. So the average video that you're going to earn once you reach monetization could be probably less than a dollar. <laughs> because if you're just averaging under 1,000 views, <laughs> you're making a little bit of money out of the commercial. That is if people actually if you retain people's attention and they're watching your whole video and people's attention pen is very very small they're not even really watching your video there is this analytic that you're looking at at duration of the content besides the views and no matter how good your video is it can be super low because people are moving from one video to the next they're looking at the list that you have in the description and they're figuring out okay whatever you say they're jumping to just see what you have to say blah 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 and your duration can be very low so you per video you're not really making a lot so it's all this is to say that you have all this technology that's going to either work for you or against you and the attractiveness of you as a person as an influencer or as a speaker and how entertaining you are all of these are going to essentially determine how successful your business is going to be now for those that just are not going to be successful they're going to have if they are reasonable they're going to have just like any business proposition a lifespan and i'm looking at the tons of channels that have closed down on youtube where the people stop reviewing fragrances because if you're not ultimately no matter how much you love fragrances if you're not rich you're just throwing your money out there and you're just purchasing fragrances just to review, it can become problematic. The cost can be high. Now, initially, understand, you can keep investing that money because, like I say, if you become successful at it, you get free products, so your cost is lower. You're not really spending your money buying those products. And you would have to work diligently to court companies to get them to give you free products personally i don't even know how to do that i've rarely re received free products from companies um so and then you get the danger in, in terms of people trusting your judgment just because whether you find free products versus you don't so all this is to be into consideration how successful you actually going to make it or not so basically what it means ultimately anybody that is logical they are going to have a lifespan in terms of how much how long they're going to be able to be on YouTube if they're not if they're spending a lot more for every new fragrance that comes all those 500 600 300 dollar fragrances because it turns out as people are fantasizing even if they cannot afford those expensive perfumes they want to hear about it <laughs> so it's really people who are talking about very expensive fragrances that are even being watched because i've noticed some of the videos that 
get a lot more views or on my more expensive fragrances so it's still actually in a way sometimes because of the ease of entry of fragrance as a business decision you can use it to establish a market a viewing because people like to you don't have to have credibility if you just enter a niche okay if you just enter a niche that people already have a demand for you don't have to have the personality for you to just be listened to so because of that I have seen diversity in people who begin with talking about fragrances so they slowly establish a, an influence and if they care to give a message they can somewhat um, pivot their content to a more diverse content but that's very very risky because people really just coherence they're just like they went to you because they're obsessed about perfume they don't care about other stuff in your life so you can expect that it's not easily you're going to trick people you're going to probably lose your audience but that's going to have to be a risk that you're willing to take <laughs> You know, if you didn't know about all the economic costs of just studying a YouTube perfume just for fun and you realize it's costing you a lot of money, what are you going to do with all those fragrances? Any one bottle of fragrance, unless if you are really obnoxious and dump it on you and just, you think people are complimenting you, but they're not, they're just kind of notice that fragrance is just like in their nose so they they have no other choice but to say oh what you wearing but is it a compliment or not you don't know I know I've asked people what you wearing they think it's a compliment but it's so that I don't buy that fragrance because I'm like that thing is too obnoxious I don't want to project this type of invasion in people's space with my fragrance <laughs> you know so any one fragrance is going to last you a super long time so obviously what you're going to have to do is potentially sell your fragrances in the secondary market. And you have Mercury, you have all type of stuff. So you would see a tons of YouTube reviewers are just recycling their products. And some people are talking about that as, oh, that means you didn't trust your product. No, it doesn't mean that. It means you've experienced the product, you love it, but you, you have to recycle because it's not humanly possible to have 3,000 bottles of fragrances when you're not a store. You have to establish that secondary store, uh, you know, secondhand store for all these products. And now the online sales platforms allow you to do that easily. So this is perhaps the way you can recycle your money and keep reviewing fragrances. I hope I have shared with you my take on the economics of perfume reviews. I am an economist, but I'm almost not really speaking from an economist perspective as much as a user and content creator perspective and just using my background as an economist but i'm saying i'm not speaking from an economist perspective purely just because i don't have all the data to really assess the cost and benefit of that product the actual average cost and the loss the total loss and the duration the average duration of the business but I can see from observation it's like a good two three four years before people start pivoting into talking about other things and whether that other things work or not it's another risk you took and it doesn't cost you anything <laughs> you know but if anything you just enjoy just communicating with whoever is following you and going from there so yeah, <laughs> for most reviewers, that's going to be 
perhaps a no-brainer what I talk about but I suppose for other people who sort of sometimes wonder what's going on now you get the gist of it so I hope that was useful this is a mod thing until next time bye